Now that we know all the raster options, let's delve deeper into the rasterization settings and see how to customize the raster. First, let's choose the most popular raster setting, the dark media raster. If we click on the dark media raster, which is the fourth option in the list, the use screening as configured as a mask recommended for dark media option. Once the dark media raster has been activated, we are presented with several options in order to customize the dark media raster to our personal taste. If we start on the top line, we can see only one option is available for us to change. This is the mask option. The mask value defines how large and how many dots are used in the raster. We recommend a value between 25 and 30. This provides the best washability, softness and the brightest colors. Choosing a lower mask value makes the dots larger while placing fewer dots on the raster. The lower the value, the more toner you save, but the image quality is affected. Choosing a higher mask value makes the dots smaller while placing more dots in the raster, but the washability of the image drops. It's all about finding a middle ground, one where the image quality is good and the washability is high. We do not recommend using a value higher than 40, as this goes beyond the limits of the transfer media. Using a value of 40 and higher merges the dots together, which decreases the washability as well as producing a hard touch to the image. For this image we will go with a mask size of 27. At this value the right amount of the image is removed and the dots are a good size which helps the image stand out on the t-shirt, while the spacing of the dots offers high washability. If a raster value does not appear in the drop down menu list, clicking on the field and typing your value is possible. In the next line below we have two options available to use, the shadow tolerance and the dot shape drop down menus. The shadow tolerance option removes the dark colors from the image. The higher the value, the more dark areas are removed from the image, which, depending on your image, can save you a huge amount of toner. The lower the value, the less dark areas are removed from the image, making the image harder and less washable. We have two settings saved as the standard shadow tolerance setting. 100 removes the minimum amount of black from the image. This option is best used if your image does not have a lot of dark areas. 300 removes almost all the black areas in the image. This option is best used if your image has a lot of dark colors. Please be careful using the shadow tolerance tool. Removing too much of the image can make your image unrecognizable. For this design, we will leave the shadow tolerance at a value of 170. We can see in the examples how the shadow tolerance works. Moving on to the dot shape option. The dot shape option allows you to choose which form the raster dot should take. You can choose from seven different raster shapes. Each dot shape looks different and provides a unique look to your design. The first option in the list is the Euclidean dot shape, and this is our standard setting. The Euclidean dot shape option can be compared to the round dot shape raster, as both of these settings use round dots, but there is a slight difference between the two. If we take a closer look at the example images, we can see that the Euclidean and round raster both have dots. But we can also see that there is a slight difference in the raster, as the Euclidean raster is more open, while the round raster is more closed. We can see on the edges of the design that the round raster becomes jagged, and can be difficult to transfer to the garment. Because the Euclidean raster dots are more open, this makes the Euclidean raster slightly softer when compared to the round dot shape raster. The other dot shapes which we have are square, line, elliptical, pincushion and rhombus. Each of the dot rasters offer the same washability. Choosing one over the other is a personal choice. But when we talk about the line raster option, this is something special. The line dot shape can be used to help reduce the cracking with garments. This is one advantage which the other raster options cannot offer. By changing the angle of the line raster to match the up and down structure of the garment, you can prevent your image from cracking. This is because your image has been cut up into lines and those lines are transferred to the garment structure and move with the garment as it is being stretched. By choosing the line raster, the printed image is cut up into very fine lines which match the structure of the garment. So as the garment moves or stretches, the design simply moves with it, without causing any cracks to the image. This leads us nicely to the angle tool option. The angle tool controls the angle of the raster on the image. The standard setting which we use in the transfer rib is 52.5 degrees. This angle is best used for Euclidean, round, square, elliptical, pincushion and the rhombus raster. The angle of the raster is important to prevent the raster from taking over the image. 
It should be the image which takes the main focus, not the raster. The exception to this is the line raster. All other rasters become very noticeable when positioned at 0 degrees. The raster is least visible when rotated to 52.5 degrees as the example shows. The best angle to use for the line raster is one that follows the structure of the garment. For example, if your image is saved in the portrait layout, like we have saved our image, then using an angle of 0 degrees makes sure that the line raster goes from top to bottom. If your image has been saved in the landscape layout, then using the 90 degree angle makes the lines run from left to right. We can see that 90 degrees does not appear in the angle drop down list. You can change this angle by clicking on the angle field and typing the 90 degree angle or any other angle which you would like to use. Moving on from the angle field, we have the highlights tool. The highlights tool determines the size of the smallest dots in the lighter areas of the raster. The lower the value, the larger the smaller dots in the lighter areas of the image become. The higher the value, the larger the smallest dots in the lighter areas of the image become. If we take a look at the examples, we can see how the highlights tool changes the light areas of the rasterized image. But we can also see on the edges of the lighter areas of the image that the smallest dots have been replaced with larger raster dots. The standard setting within the transfer rib is zero. This is because for the majority of images, this tool is not required. Only in special cases where you may be having trouble with missing dots would you need to use this tool. If we look at the examples, we can see exactly how the highlights tool changes those small raster dots. The last available tool in the dark media raster option is the shadows tool. The shadows tool determines the size of the dots in the dark areas of the image. The lower the value, the larger the smallest dots in the darkest areas of the image raster become. If we take a look at the examples, we can see how the shadow tool changes the rasterized image. The shadows tool is best used if you have missing dots in the darker areas of your image raster. Now that we have customized our raster, the next thing we can do is preview how the raster will look on our image. To do this, we need to click the preview button at the bottom of the window. The preview window has several options available. Any changes made in this window will not affect your image, as this is only a preview mode. The main option we have is the zoom tool. This allows you to take a closer look at your image raster. The second most important tool is the All Separations Black option. This option removes the colours from the image, replacing them with black. This is a helpful tool for taking a closer look at the raster and how it looks with your image. The Pixel Smoothing tool simply smooths the pixels in the preview window. The last option is the Colour Selection Preview. You can preview each individual colour which will be printed with your image. For example, cyan, magenta, yellow, or white. When clicking on the spot color white option, you will need to use the All Separations Black tool, as white toner cannot be displayed on a white color background. Close the preview window to return to step 5 in the rasterization options. A really great feature in the rasterization window is the option of saving or loading previously saved rasterization and printer settings. The settings option with the small printer icon at the bottom of the window lets you save the current raster setting. Clicking on the load printer settings takes you to a list of previously saved rasterization settings. Please note that the options which are saved include the screening, print and ICC profile settings, but do not include the output options. This feature saves you time by removing the need to repeat tasks. If you find a raster that you like, or if you would like to save different rasters with your personal settings, then you can save these changes for use with different images. Let's go ahead and save our settings for later. Click Settings, then click Save Actual Printer Settings. In the new window, choose a name and add a description of this raster. Click Save to add the raster settings to our printer settings list. You can remove old or unused settings by selecting it from the list and clicking 